So now we're going to graph a quadratic function. To do that, we're going to take it through four steps. We're going to find the vertex, both its x and its y values, and we'll use that vertex formula for that. We'll find the y-intercept, find the x-intercepts, could have one, but generally it has two, and then we're going to plot the points and graph the function. All right, so let's take these two through those steps. So let's first find the vertex. We use that vertex formula, negative b over 2a. All right, so negative b will be negative, negative 2 is our b, and then let's notice that a is really a 1, so 2 times 1. So we will get 2 on top and 2 on the bottom, or an x value for our vertex. Now we still have to find the y value. Don't forget to get the y value because then you, otherwise you just don't know where to plot it. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. All right, so we're going to take f of 1 and plug that back in so we'll have 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 8. And that's 1 minus 2 minus 8, and that will give us negative 9. So we've got step 1 now. We've got our vertex 1, negative 9. Now, let's go to step 2, find the y-intercept. Um, and I'm going to write a little quickie here. 0, C. Okay, so, well, that's nice if we think about this being A, this is B, this is C. So our y-intercept is 0, C. Now, we could just put a 0 into our x's and find the answer that way, but this is the quick way. When we put zeros into our x's, they go away and we get negative 8. So notice that's the C. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 8. X-intercepts, though, are a little harder. We've got to take the whole thing and set it to 0 and solve. And I probably need to give myself a lot more room here. So let me do that. Let's see if I can just move that down. Okay. All right, so let's set this to 0. This factors nicely, factors of negative 8 that add to give us negative 2 are x minus 4 and x plus 2. Set those to 0. And this one gives me 4. And this one gives me negative 2. All right, let's write these as their points, x-intercepts of 4, 0, and negative 2, 0. Now that we've got everything, we're going to go to step 4, which is to graph this thing. And I will draw this as straight as I can. And let's go back and let's plot our vertex first. It's at 1, negative 9. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right, so there it is. There's my vertex. All right, now let's plot the y-intercept. That was 0, negative 8. 0, negative 8 is right here. All right, now, remember in our last video, we were doing axes, axes of symmetry, and they are always dotted lines that go through the vertex. And we don't always draw them. They're not really part of the graph, but... We can help, they can help me a little bit here. Um, let me go back to 
I'm going to put a couple more tick marks on the x-axis here. Make sure that they're evenly spaced, the same amount of space or approximately that I used before. All right, now, the sides of the graph are always symmetric to their axis of symmetry. So the distance from here to here, if I go a little bit over this way, there should be another point approximately the same distance away from that dotted line. So I've got another point just by symmetry across the axis of symmetry. And now let's plot for 0, which is here, and negative 2, 0. And notice that if I connect this in to my parabola, the parabola, well, other than the fact that I didn't draw very straight, looks very symmetric across that line, at, uh, that <clears throat> axis of symmetry right there. And if it doesn't look symmetric after you plot all your points, you know you've made a mistake somewhere. So let's look at a second one to get through our same steps. So we have this function here. Let's begin by finding its vertex. So negative b over 2a. So negative b. b is negative 6. So we have negative, negative 6. a is a negative 1. 2 times negative 1. So on the top, we get positive 6. On the bottom, we get negative 2. That gives us an x value of negative 3. Now don't forget, we have to plug this back in to get our y value. So f of negative 3 is negative negative 3. Be careful that you leave that negative out in front of that x squared when you plug in. Negative 6 times negative 3 and minus 8. So when I square this negative 3, it's 9, but there's a minus sign in front of it, so it's a negative 9. And then negative 6 times negative 3 is plus 18, minus 8. All right, so negative 9 and 18 is 9, and 9 minus 8 is 1. So this vertex is at negative 3, 1. Oops, there we go. All right, next, let's find the y-intercept. Well, sitting right there, 0, negative 8. And then, let's find our x-intercepts by setting the whole thing to 0. Now, this will be easier to solve if our x squared is not negative. So let's multiply through by a negative 1. When we do that, it'll change the sign of everything. And let's now notice that we can actually factor this thing much more easily. So factors of 8 that add to 6 are 2 and 4. So we'll have x plus 2 and x plus 4. Set those to 0. And we will get negative 2 and negative 4. Now let's remember to write those as their points so this is negative 2, 0, and this is negative 4, 0. Now that we've got all of that, we're going to graph this thing. So I guess I'm going to have to put it here because I'm running out of room. Okay, now go back to the vertex. It's negative 3, 1, so let's plot. Negative 3, 1 will be right here. While I'm at it, I'll go ahead and put that little axis of symmetry running through it. Vertical line that's dotted. Not really part of the graph, but it helps us to draw a little bit. 
Okay, now I'm going to go back and put my y-intercept 0, negative 8. 0, negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right here. Now, we'll just sort of estimate how far this is from that dotted line and go to the other side, about the same distance away, maybe right about there is another point. All right. Now, lastly, let's plot negative 2, 0. That's right here. And negative 4, 0. I'll just put another tick mark on there. It's going to be right here. And here's our parabola. It's a downward parabola. Not perfectly straight, but we get the idea. Now, just one more thing to kind of take note of. Well, notice this one was downward and the first one was upward. And we can tell if it's going to go up or down by the fact that there'll be a negative number, and it doesn't have to be just negative 1, just any negative number, in front of x squared will make our parabola turn downward. A positive number in front of x squared will make our parabola turn upward. So you can kind of look at that before you start graphing to see which direction your parabola is going to end up going.